Hello, welcome back to Change the Reel. If this is the first time watching one of my videos, I thought it was time to get back into reviewing movies again. Like they care about you. Tell them about me. Yeah, I was getting to it. To change things up, I invited my friend Sparky here to join me in reviews. You mean make them better. Yeah, if you say so. Today we will be looking at one of my favorite movies, the original Godzilla. Yeah, no, we're not watching that. Wait, what? Why not? You want to bring down the hammer of Toho's copyright down upon us? Well, then what are we watching? You gotta be kidding me. Raiga, the God of Monsters, is the second movie in a trilogy of films made to be a parody of Godzilla films. The film opens up in the ocean and we see right away the sea monster, Raiga. Oh no, he's attacked by CGI fish. A group of prehistoric looking fish that the film calls Bonefish attack Raiga. Wow, to the throat. Raiga apparently has lightning powers. Going all raiding on them. He destroys a nearby tanker and kills the Bonefish. A nearby fishing boat sees this. Don't turn your back. Fish attack! Wow. That fish must be filled with gasoline. In Tokyo, we are introduced to Hajimi and his three daughters. He is an unlicensed street vendor. His daughters are accusing him of being unfaithful to his late wife. By pinching his butt. Does that make sense? Later, we see Hajimi with his three friends. Along with a random woman. Who the hell is that woman? They appoint Hajimi treasurer for some festival next year. Let's have a musical number to pad out the runtime. Walking home, Hajimi and his friends witness lightning striking a beer cafe. Cover your navel? Is that a Japanese thing? We didn't cut to a professor who is studying one of the bonefish. Again? Never turn your back on one of these fish. Back with Hajimi, his daughters give him shit when they see him with another woman. They go all Street Fighter on him. Is this a video game now? That was a little extreme. Wasn't this movie about a giant kaiju? Sure is. Raiga shows up in Tokyo Bay and destroys a cargo ship. Do you think we'll see a space dragon in this film? Don't think so. We are introduced to the Japanese government deciding what to do about the giant monsters. Shin Godzilla, this is not. Inner Captain Kido. He decides to send in jets to take care of Raiga. No kidding, because they said tanks would have gotten stuck in rush hour traffic. Raiga then sends an iconic statue called the Asani Flame crashing down in front of Hajimi and his friends. They do a poop joke? Really? That is what they went with? Raiga appears, causing destruction. He is attacked by After Effects jets. The jets appear to have little effect. Raiga calls lightning down and destroys some of them. It's almost like they never watched a Godzilla movie. Godzilla! Godzilla! No, 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 no! <laughs> okay, that was funny. After a blast, Hajimi and his friends get knocked down. I'm loving it! Well, that happened. They then decide to use missiles. Should have used them first. Missiles are an awesome idea. And? Well, that was easy. That was shorter than I expected. Apparently, two months later, Hajimi is making money selling Raiga t-shirts. 
making money and all that destruction. Sounds like something I would do. Later on, one of Hachimi's daughters announced that she wants to be an idol singer. Will this be important to the story? The answer is no. Well, that was random. These bonefish are more dangerous than Raiga. Speaking about random, what about this? It looks like they filmed a real comedy act on stage. So these people are introduced in this scene and only appear in this scene. Apparently, the stage performer's father survived an attack from another sea monster back in World War II. Or called an excuse to use footage from the first movie. He states that Raga avoided destroying temples during his rampage. You think that might come up later? It was probably the only reason to have this scene. Raga reappears in Tokyo. A genie is seeing nothing but yin signs. <laughs> Commander Kito wants to use cluster bombs on Raiga. They send them tanks. Gotta love those CG effects. Raiga makes little work of those tanks. Hajimi sends his daughters off to a hotel while he and his friends go off to a shrine. They protest because they think he's going to go off to be with a woman. Which is exactly what he's doing. The military sends in a huge tank they call Kamikaze. <laughs> Don't they learn? He's called the God of Monsters. Your tank won't hurt him. Hajimi meets up with Mizumi. He also runs with the three of his daughter's classmates, who convince him to return to his daughter. Don't you mean guilt him? The military gets the drop on Raiga, and then they drop a cluster bomb. And then... Wait a minute, there's two of them? Where did the second one come from? After the second Raiga appears, the politicians remove Commander Kito after he was going to order an all-out attack, no matter the casualties. They think that if they stop attacking, that they both will just go back into the sea. Do they? Hell no. They fight. They battle each other, causing major damage to Tokyo. What? The new Raiga defeats the older one? Was that supposed to happen? Apparently so. Afterward, the new Raiga decides to, well, make sure others know that this territory is his before leaving. Nick, the next day, Hajimi, his daughters, and his friends look over the destruction. The men conclude that the monster attacked because of global warming. How the hell did they come to that conclusion? Were they watching a different movie? Well, that was Raiga. What the? Okay, that happened. Is it over now? I hope so. So that was Raiga, God of the Monsters. How was it? It was surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. That's not saying much. No, it's not. But given that it, I didn't know it was a parody when I started watching it, I thought it was going to be a cheap ripoff. That doesn't make it good. True. There was a couple of jokes I found funny. A lot of the jokes didn't seem to work. But since the Japanese film, did it fail because it wasn't funny? Or because it didn't translate well for American viewers? What is funny over there is not necessarily funny over here. Correct. In the end, I didn't hate the movie. And if you're looking for some cheesy fun, I say check it out. Until then, I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>